your match in uh, the speed chess championship against arjun erigaisi that was absolutely wild uh back and forth he started off super well you came back in the three plus one i mean and after that in the bullet section that was just madness uh take us through the match yeah it, it was i think a match defined by uh we both had our streaks you know we both had our momentum which shifted back and forth it was a very tough match but i can't say i've ever had an easy one of these matches i've had matches where i haven't done too well and it was a bit lopsided in my opponent's favor but i've never had a match where it was very easy for me except maybe a few years back but against arjun i really didn't think i was if i was a favorite it was a very slight one before the match and after the five minute portion i already felt like i was an underdog he was just playing better than me yeah it felt that way especially in the five plus uh, one portion actually are you used to playing this five plus one three plus one and then one plus one or do you play this only in the speed chess championship and title tuesdays well one second increment is unusual in over the board chess it's always a two second increment five two three two yeah uh and three one is is commonly used in title tuesday that's that's the title tuesday uh for uh time control so I'm used to that one, but besides that, besides playing the occasional title Tuesday, I'm not really used to it. And uh, five one one one, I don't really play at all, except for the speed chess championship, which happens every year. And you know, I, I might play one or two matches usually in the speed chess championship, and uh, get a little bit of practice in one one and five one, but not too much. Traditionally, I think five one has been my best time control, but this time it was my worst, which made me very worried yeah um after five minutes i was like okay this is usually my best one and um on the other hand like from a logical point of view that made sense and i should be very worried but on the other hand i kind of felt optimistic because i was very happy just to be done with the five minute i thought okay three minutes i i don't have to like labor over my decisions i can just play i played very intuitively with the in three and one minute portions i wasn't calculating much only trying to calculate when, when I was low on time as best I could. Uh, but the start of the game, I was just playing very quickly and intuitively. Yeah, uh, it felt that way. I was watching the match between Spain and Costa Rica and Spain was just completely demolishing Costa Rica. And then Arjun was also demolishing you in the five plus one. And I was like, do I turn this thing off? Or like, what's, what's the plan here? And then uh, I looked away for like five minutes, the three plus one started and you are already six and a half, six and a half. And I was like, okay, I guess we have a match on our hands. What do you feel he was doing better in the five plus one? Or uh, w was it you? Was it your form? Did you feel like you needed some, uh, some time to tune up your decision making? What was uh, the big differentiator, I guess, at the beginning? Yeah, I think it was a combination. Um, definitely, I was a bit uh, rusty at the start. I, I wasn't it wasn't that I wasn't seeing things necessarily, but I wasn't playing, I was playing slowly and a bit laboriously and uh, things changed completely in the three and one minute. So maybe I needed a bit more time to get into it. I definitely felt a lot better after I got into it for, for a bit. I also thought, okay, at some point the lead was six, three for him. Three point lead is dangerous, but it's not unheard of to come back from that. I also like tried to take some inspiration from past matches. And last year I played Maxime at some point I had a three point lead and then he equalized it and he even got, uh, and it, I think at some point a three point lead himself in that match. So, so sometimes these things, you know, they go back and forth and someone takes a lead and then completely collapses. Yeah. So I, I wasn't, I didn't think the match is hopeless at any point. There have been times when I thought a match is hopeless, like, as someone I was playing Lev, I think 2018 in the same format. And after a while, I just felt like I'm not coming back from this match. Also, oh, that was when we like, were in, uh, in, in we were camp, a, right? Yeah, we were in a camp at the farm. Yeah, I remember that was a complete disaster. <laughs> no, that match was a disaster. Yeah. But also, I feel like some players, they do very well with momentum and Levon is one of them. Yeah. And some players, and I, I don't know Arjun very well to say this, but i noticed that he sometimes uh, gets to a hot start and then he tapers off a bit, which might be that he's trying to like preserve his lead, which is a very natural thing for people to do. Once they get a lead, they want to preserve it and, you know, just coast to, to the match finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
when the best strategy is actually to uh, continue putting pressure on your opponent, trying to extend the lead as much and keep the momentum going. Because once you like over the momentum, it can shift very dramatically, like like it, it happened in the match. So there were a few factors that gave me some optimism, even when things were looking quite down. When did you feel like the match is starting to turn? Um, was it as soon as you started piling up the victories? Was it any specific game that you could uh, point towards? What was that specific moment? Yeah, so the three minute, I already felt from the start that things were going very well. Just with the first game. Then he ran into my prep. It was one of the few lines I prepared for this match was he had been playing the slot very recently in the Champions Tour, in uh, the Chess 24 Champions Tour. Yeah. So I saw he, he was playing the slot in like every game against Pragnanta, against um, uh, against uh, Chakriar. So I thought, okay, I should at least prepare for this because Arjun plays everything under the sun, opening-wise, but his most recent one, he was very faithful to the slot. So at some point, he, he was like, avoiding it, avoiding it, and then he went for it, and I got my prep in up to Bishop takes b5 I had prepared. So that was very, very valuable, of course, that I got basically, I wouldn't say a free win, I still had to play well, but um, I got a huge head start on that game and was able to win that game. So that, that was very important. And then he gained the momentum back in three minutes. So the last game of three minutes, it was so important for me to win that that I came into the bullet with an even score. I really felt good about bullet after I won that last three minute game uh, from a completely like unpleasant position for most of it. And that's a, that's an interesting thing that you're saying. You felt good about the bullet because a lot of people were saying in anticipation of this match that the bullet is going to be uh, very difficult for you. I don't know exactly why. I don't know Arjun as being this um bullet beast or at least i cannot remember seeing him just uh, wiping people off the floor in the bullet section how did you feel about the bullet was was that something that you checked his games before were you like worried about it at all or what was uh what was your feeling yeah. before the match well I, I have to say um i'm never very confident about bullet because i know that i can play well or i can collapse it's very easy for me to collapse as well if I'm not feeling 100% physically, uh, if I'm not seeing the board very clearly, I can just uh, play terribly. Mm. But I can also play extremely good bullet. Um, it is possible for me sometimes. Like if if I'm not blundering simple tactics, my intuition to play good bullet and gain a lead on the clock early on is, is pretty decent. And I didn't think Arjun is like a specialist in bullet. You know, yeah. he, he's, a, he's an excellent player. So of course he's good in bullet just by virtue of that. But he's not like, let's say, Andrew Tang style, who, mm -hmm. whose his strength doesn't increase when he's playing bullet. Like, um, you know, when I play Andrew Tang in one minute, I understand that I'm the better player than him, but I'm also like the underdog in bullet. He's just going to outplay me when it comes down to, to playing with a few seconds on your clock. With Arjun, I didn't think uh, that was the case. So I, I thought, yeah, if I'm playing okay. And coming off the three minutes, I thought I was playing okay in time troll. Then it's 50-50. Maybe I would even give myself a slight nod because I, I haven't seen him uh, play bullets so religiously, you know, or... Uh... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's not on... I, I don't see him that often on chess.com. That's the funny part. Well, he part. played the bullet championship. The bullet uh, chess championship on chess.com, right. which was a double elimination knockout. How did he do in that one? I think he won he didn't one win that one. Matches. No, no, no. I mean, no. Of course, no. He, he. The only players who had a chance to win, I think, were Hikaru and Andrew Tang, and Hikaru ended up winning. Yeah, not surprising, right? Hikaru is uh is the best player in the world as a, the best bullet player in the world. I would say. Absolutely, but also there's a big distinction between uh just the pure bullet that we kind of grew up with, also uh the one plus one which you guys were playing. Yeah, I think 1 plus sure. 1 is such a different beast, right? Because in 1 plus 0, you can get a completely smashing position. And then if you don't have enough time, you just lose on time. And that's what actually yeah. differentiates Andrew Tang and Hikaru as well in uh, that time format. With 1 plus 1, if you get a good position, a winning position, a technically winning position, you're probably going to convert that. So it's that's a huge huge difference and i feel that 
that plus one second definitely helps you in general. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't think it helped me against Arjun because I don't think either of us are bullet specialists mm. in the way that, let's say, uh, Tang is, uh, Naroditsky, Danya is very clearly yeah. a bullet specialist. Uh, Hikaru, obviously. Although Hikaru, I think, is more like he's just very good at playing low on time. While uh, when I see guys like Andrew or Danya, when they're pre-moving, I, I just like, I can't do this. This skill I just don't possess. <laughs> I mean, I can pre-move, but I can't pre-move high-quality moves, which they can do, which to me is astonishing. Like, um, you pre-move and you don't blunder. Uh, while to me, pre-moving is just, okay, I'm just trying to flag you, you know? To them, it's almost like an art. So I, I can't, I don't possess that skill, but I don't think that, I think very few people do. Maybe it's, you know, Danya, uh, Andrew Tang, uh, Hikaru. I think Magnus will also be very good at bullet, but again, just because he's such a good chess player. Mm. That he has that quality which doesn't really go away when he's down. Well, yeah, he goes away, but it doesn't go away as, as much as other players when he's down to a few seconds. But yeah, you're you're right. One one and one zero is just a different game. The same way that one zero and thirty seconds is a different game. Magnus also plays a lot on the internet. Yeah, we know he's pretty much famous uh, streams, drunken streams when he just uh, you know has fun with his buddies and he plays a lot of bullet. He really enjoys that, and I think he plays on leeches quite a lot. Um, I think there was a moment at some point where he won from 5-3 to 6-3 and I th believe it was a completely equal position and then you just forgot about your time or something along those lines and I felt yeah. like you were going to get tilted at that point I could see it on your face I think you like threw up your hands in the air and if I'm not mistaken you even took like a short bathroom break to just like splash some water on your face or whatever oh. you did like, so so I'll just explain. These breaks yeah. are not based on the players. These are scheduled breaks, Got it. which are in the middle of the segment. So for the five minutes, since it's a 60-minute... Uh, um, sorry, since it's a 90-minute segment, mm -hmm. after 45 minutes, we get a five-minute break. For the three minutes, since it's an hour-long segment, we get a, a five-minute break 30 minutes through. So it's not, I didn't take a bathroom break, right? We, we both got a bathroom. We go, both got a break. Uh, five minute break and yeah i was very tilted i mean i just it wasn't that i forgot about my clock i just froze like which i don't do usually i don't i don't run out of time i usually find a way to make the moves even if they're bad moves and i lose i don't flag but i flagged in that game i flagged in, in at least one other game and i think so, that was the yeah, game I, uh where you had rook knight and two pawns versus rook bishop and one pawn and then he got your g pawn and yeah, you that's didn't what I managed to run with a beep on. I had six seconds and it was a draw, a, yeah. little, a more pleasant draw for him, of course. He was the one who could press there. Uh, and I was going to, I wasn't sure where to put my rook because I could have given a check, which is what I was going to do. And it actually gave me an alert on the screen that like you ran out of time <laughs> before you were able to execute your move, rook g1. I yeah. think it was rook g1, but I didn't work up one. Yeah. And, um, I'd never seen that before. But yeah, I, I just hesitated. I was just freezing with a few seconds left, which usually wouldn't happen. It showed that I was kind of, yeah, I was a little bit out of it at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that was a really fun match, I have to say. And then you guys entered the three plus one. And I'm trying to, he played the dragon against you. I was like, holy smokes, how is he playing the dragon? The dragon is supposed to be uh, obviously much worse, but he played but this, he's, he's a dragon expert. He played this queen b6 line, right, in dragon. Yeah, but Arjun is actually a dragon expert. He he prepared it quite well. He was playing it in the World Rapid Blitz Championship. Hmm. Uh, I, I knew that he could play the dragon. I didn't prepare for it, but I knew that it was a possibility that he could go for. So yeah, that that was um, not a surprise at all. Did you have anything ready for me. it? Sorry, what's that? Did you have anything ready for it? Did you do some prep before? No, no, no because I thought, okay, I won't play much E4, and if, if I play E4 after D6, I'll play Bishop E5 check. But, you know, in the heat of the moment, you just decide what to do on the spot. So in that game, I forgot that he plays a dragon. I played d4 thinking I'll play something in the Night Orf. And then he played the dragon. I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's what he does. It's not exactly what I wanted to go for because it's hard to handle without preparation and blitz. But I kind of remembered something about it. He obviously knew it a bit better. Uh, so the opening was a success for him. But it certainly wasn't a surprise for me that he could play the dragon. 
and uh, I think you uh, you actually won that, right? If I'm not mistaken, that game in Dragon. No, no, that was the game where I flagged. Oh, was that the game you guys flagged? Yes. Okay, that yes. was the flagging game. All right. All right. Did he repeat the Dragon after that? No. I think I was mostly avoiding E4 after that. Oh, really? What were you... What and he, he started remember? switching, which was a pleasant surprise for me in general, that he didn't stick to one set of openings. Mm. Mm. Because... I thought that if anything will be a downside for me in his match, one thing could be preparation. Yeah. That I don't really have the motivation to prepare a million openings for these blitz matches. I don't do that. I mean, I prepared a little bit, you know, but uh, the guy plays like a dozen different openings. I, I didn't feel like going through everything and getting all my openings in check. So I thought if he really just sticks to one, this will be super annoying. But it looked like he also had the same approach. He didn't prepare for it very specifically. He wanted to play some French, some this, some that, which for me was a, a pleasant surprise. <clears throat> a guy like Wesley, who plays Berlin every single game, <laughs> is someone more annoying because then he just plays it. And at some point you run out of stuff to do against him. Yeah. And this is, he covers the same way. He plays Berlin with white, he might experiment, but he sticks to his openings that he knows better than anyone, you know? Yeah. Which is a very annoying approach. I was kind of happy that Arjun didn't go for that. By the way, um, let's uh, transition. Yeah. And, and of course, I mean, it was, it was a good finish to the end of that match. Uh, I felt in the bullet section you were doing really really well and i think you saved actually some crucial uh games it was one where he had the pawn on h2 and um it looked completely busted and you, you yeah i saved that one. I, I think you saved a couple back to back and then i, I also like, saved okay, a position where he had pretty good. connected past pawns on like b3 and c3 yes at some point they became like b2 b3 c2 and i'm I just have a blockade, but I realize that in time trouble, it's very difficult to break a blockade when your king is potentially weak. So I was happy I got to that stage where his pawns aren't promoting, you know? And, and yeah, but this, there were a lot of lost positions I saved. I was quite, quite proud to have not collapsed at various moments. Yeah, I could see it on your face, actually. You were uh, cracking a smile. That was pretty, pretty encouraging. Um, how do you approach those last couple of games when you know that everything is on the line so the score is pretty much you won by the way the last two games mm -hmm. and i think before those last two games the score was completely tight i think it was something along the lines of um 12 12. yeah i choked a bit in that benoni game i blundered d5 then i saw a good position then he blundered queen f6 i was winning yeah and then and then he lost that one i played this move knight f5 which is so tempting and then i realized later that my knight on g3 actually kills all of his counterplay. And if I play rook takes e5, he has to take back with the pawn. He has no check on h1 because my knight on g3, and then I just play d6. And not only does he have no check on h1, he can't go to h4 to trade queens because I always have this knight f5 resource. And my pawn just promotes. That's it. It's basically a game over. Um, and then, of course, there's mutual blunders after. So, But that was a moment I was like, yeah, why would I play knight f5? I realized that my knight is just too beautiful to trade for a rook. Uh, but... In the heat of the moment, you just can't resist. You know, I just couldn't resist it. I give a check, four king, his king and rook. And uh, yeah, those are kind of moments where someone who is really, who has great presence of mind, it's not even a chess thing. It's just like having the presence of mind to understand, not to rush and make an impulse move, which is what I did. Yeah, and I think that actually uh, allowed him to equalize the score. But still, yeah. after that, you managed to uh, score back-to-back -back, uh, victories. Do you feel the pressure at that point? How do you deal with the pressure? Do you just like, okay, this is just another match. I will have this type of opportunities in, in, in later on in my career. Like every single week, there's a new match. But you, you still feel the butterflies, right? With everything on the line in the last two games. No, of course. Well, I would say the nervousness is usually more often before than during, Before the match, Because yeah. during... Yeah, during is just, you get into it. And once it's one minute, I was very much not thinking about the result. I, I just made sure I knew the match clock, so I knew what to do. Uh, so I knew that the last game, a draw would, would finish the match. A win would, of course, also finish the match. It was very smooth. I, I wasn't, yeah, that was I was easy. never not winning that game. It actually reminded me of uh, the game against Ali Reza from Title Tuesday. Very yeah, similar. I, you just yeah, got the completely winning position. Ways. 
Uh, I, I just, I wasn't too concerned during that game. I mean, I felt like I was playing the better bullet at the moment. I was white. Uh, opening, I wasn't super happy about because I decided to like play knight of three, b3, but then he played a king's indian setup. I didn't really get a good setup, but it was about equal and he didn't handle it very well. He allowed me to just push my pawns on the queen side. Uh, it felt like he thought that some sort of mess will happen on the king side, but his pieces are so tied down that, of course, he'll never get the chance to attack me. Yeah, I mean, you spent a lot of time with uh, young Arjun. Um, three hours of, or something along those lines, maybe even more than that. What do you feel his biggest strengths and uh, weaknesses or let's call them things that need to be addressed uh, for him to, to progress in his career? Okay, I think he calculates very well. Um, he's a very classy player. You know, he he's not like a scrapper. Like some some blitz players are scrappy players. They they make a mess out of it. They defend very well. I think Hikaru is an example of that. Of course, he's also a classy player, but he's very much he's a guy who never dies. Mm. Um, Arjun is more like a classical player who he just plays extremely good correct chess for the most part. Um, He's, as a bullet player, I mean, you know, he obviously he, he seems to weaken as the time control goes down in a way that, let's say, a guy like Hikaru doesn't as much. But it's very clear how strong he is. Like, you can tell it in Blitz. I think at some point we kind of assumed that this guy is like a, a Blitz player. Like, there's guys who just specialize in Blitz. And then we realize that he's not a Blitz player, he's just a very strong player. So, of course, he's good at Blitz. And then it, it was because his his uh, classical rating was kind of lagging behind. And, like, he was winning Blitz tournaments. And then suddenly his his classical rating just uh, caught up. And now he's, like, 27, 30, or, or whatever he is. I, I'm not sure their exact number, but uh, but he's legitimately a near top player, we would say. It almost feels, as you describe his style, that he's very similar to you in some regard. Um, no, no, no. I, I actually disagree. I'm, I'm a very disagree? scrappy really? player. I'm, I'm not a classy player at all. Hmm. I'm like. A, Would you say you were a classier, let's say, two, three years ago? No, no. I mean. Or you were always scrappy. It's just that I've, I've always had a strength in calculation, which allows me to play sometimes very precisely in classical play. Hmm. But in rapid and blitz, I, I, I'm just a very scrappy player. I. I get bad positions very often. I'm I'm pretty decent at uh, not losing from bad positions. Uh, my only weakness in that is that I tend to blunder low on time. But but I I uh, I would say that overall I'm more like a guy who who gets random positions and then the games become random. It's not a very attractive thing. <laughs> But it at least makes for fun chess, and it also it is good to have defensive skills, which uh, generally speaking I have. But yeah, I, I wouldn't. I I don't know. Everyone has such a unique style that I wouldn't say I play like Arjun. Hikaru plays like Anish. Like these things are. It's only for the, um, basically for the tabloids to say you know, so they have a story. The tabloids. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, to use this figure the figure of speech. TMZ, uh, yeah, the chess like, TMZ. Yeah, <laughs> the chess TMZ. I mean, you have to, like, describe a player. You have to, like, give it a clash of styles. Like, Hikaru is the uh, the bullet master against Magnus, the endgame grinder, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's about it's, the It's narrative. not really the yeah. case. I mean, uh, style is not so one-sided, right? It's, very, it's a very complex thing. Yeah, I think that's uh, actually one of the things that the commentators during... Uh, during the uh, match were pointing out the fact that you pretty much silence the critics now nobody can say that your rapid blitz or anything short time control is your weaker side by any stretch of the imagination and that was pretty much obvious for a very long time to i guess the insiders but yeah i mean everybody can see uh, that you've improved in that regard quite significantly in the last few years so yeah, fun match, super fun match. Now you're just pretty much sitting on the sidelines waiting to see who uh, you're going to meet next. 
It's okay, between I mean, Magnus I'll, and uh, yeah, yeah. Like and, let's uh, let's be real. Gukesh, it's, right? it's it's almost certain to be Magnus. I, I don't want to. Uh, you keep saying that. You keep you, you keep saying he's like a ninety plus favorite, 90, 90, 90 plus percent favorite to win that match. You you really believe that, huh? Yeah, ninety five plus. I mean, I don't want to take away anything plus. from Gukesh. It's like he's a great player. It's just that he. He's not going to. There, there are very few paths to victory for him. It's a very long match, and he has to outplay Magnus, who is dominant in these formats over multiple time controls for three hours. Have you seen Argentine versus Saudi Arabia? It's like thirty game matches. Right? No, I understand that anomalies happen. I mean, <laughs> I know that Gukesh can win. It's not that I'm saying he's incapable of winning. I mean, he's a twenty-seven forty player. Yeah. He can win, uh, but it's a very small chance. But yeah, small chances sometimes come to fruition. It's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, all right, we'll, we'll put it out in the universe or, uh, you know, we'll, I don't, I almost don't feel like assuming the result uh, before it actually happens. But I don't know when is our next podcast. Right now is on the 23rd. Our next one is going to be, okay, next Thursday. We still have plenty of time until we actually know um, who you're going to play. So let's not discuss that right now. Yeah. We're going to wait for that. Yeah, yeah. Also, out. you know, I don't like to comment on my own matches. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or uh, to comment on the result beforehand. It's just um, whether I'm playing someone, whether I'm a heavy favorite or a heavy underdog or 50-50, I just would prefer not to... Uh, to speculate about it before the match because it feels very strange. It's a personal thing for me. It's like I can't speak unbiasedly about my own perform <laughs> about my own chances before something happens. No, it's not. It's not even about necessarily chances, but rather you know just how you see this match more or less developing, or you know what you're looking forward to in terms of uh, a particular matchup, and obviously. A match against Magnus is always extremely exciting, right? Um, and I think you've played yeah, that's true. That's your true. last match when in in Fisher Random in 2019. Probably that was the last match that you played against Magnus. No, you asked me that last time. <laughs> Did I? It was in the Clutch Chess in 2020. Oh, Clutch Chess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was that was but, a great match. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's. I mean, we'll see what happens first. Even though Magnus is a huge favorite against Gukesh, he still has to win it. It's a uh, you know, he just can't, he can't go and say I'm Magnus and the match is over. <laughs> uh, so we can't really talk about who I'm playing until we know for sure. Absolutely. Who, who Absolutely. No, that's going to be a fun one. And actually that's going to happen um, in many days from now. I think December 6th is uh, that match scheduled. So still plenty of time, I guess. Your next match is going to be in something along the lines of more than two weeks. So... Plenty of time yeah. to uh, to get ready for that. Uh, what else has been happening in the chess world? I think so. Today we found out what the semifinalists are for uh, the World Team Championship, and in fact, a lot of things have happened. I think a lot of very strong teams that we discussed uh, in last last week's podcast uh, got eliminated. So uh, the Netherlands got eliminated. Actually, did you see this game between? Ivanchuk and uh, Van Forest. Knight to D7. This right? D7. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that was such a nice move. <laughs> I mean, obviously, once you see yeah, it. Yeah, Knight D7 is beautiful. It becomes right. obvious, but it's such a nice move. Completely unexpected. No, it's, yeah. not a, it's not, let's say, a difficult move. It's not a difficult move, per se. It's a move that would come to mind because we've seen themes like that, but you almost never see it happen over the board. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very beautiful. Uh, I mean, it must have been a pleasure for him to play that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it couldn't happen to a a guy that enjoys this type of moments uh, more than Ivanchuk. Yeah, he 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 lives for this type of moments. He's an artist. So uh, yeah, that was a really cool sight to see. So Netherlands is out. The U.S. is out. I think they actually won the first match. Um, I'm not 100% sure against who, but they won the first match and then they kind of faltered. Wait, did... What? Did they make it? No, they didn't. 
No, 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 no. They're out. Right? They're out. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean they didn't make it to the knockout stage at all. No, no, they 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 didn't. They they were out from the group stage. Um, I think so they started I'm, off. I'm well. looking at the brackets now. Yes. And it's Uzbekistan, India, which is interesting. It's uh in both cases young, very young teams. Mm -hmm. Um, Uzbekistan are the Olympic champions, so they have a very young team. It's and they've been Abdusatorov, dominating. Still Sindarov. They 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 don't have Abdul Satorov, and they've been dominating. Yeah, it's very surprising to me still because I I know how strong they are, but other teams are by rating favorites. Like without Abdul Satorov. Uzbekistan is a rating underdog against most teams. Exactly. Uh, like they are, they are a rating underdog against uh, you know Netherlands for sure, for example, right? It's it's, a, it, it's impossible to uh, to argue otherwise with Anish and Jordan and uh, Anish did not play the first few matches. And Uzbekistan, sorry. Anish did not play the first few matches. So Anish was in yeah. San Francisco, and I think he didn't make it in the first few matches. Um, so that's why they did not make it out of uh, the group stage. Yeah, so so now they play, yeah, uh, Netherlands didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And now India plays Uzbekistan. And India, I feel like it is a stronger team. Vidit is a 2700 plus player. Nihal is extremely good at fast time controls, and he's nearly 2,700. Um, SL Narayanan is very good as well. I've played him. He's he's a really tough opponent. He's good. Uh, very Sasha good Kiran is... Yeah, I, all these guys are very well-rounded, balanced players, stable. I feel like India should be the, the favorite in this match between India and Uzbekistan. I don't know, man. Uzbekistan is 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 really doing very well. Um, they have Sokolov as their captain, so it seems like there's something really clicking for them, um, with with okay, that but... captainship and 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 that team. It's a very young team. It's a very motivated team. They've won, you know, uh, the Olympia that was absolutely huge, and I think they have no, a lot no, of I incentive mean... as well. Just motivation, incentive. I know the government is helping them quite a lot and um you know uh, there is uh lavish praise whenever they win this type of uh events and and a lot of financial incentives as well so i think yeah i don't know i like i like uzbekistan as well really yeah i mean okay like don't get me wrong sokolov is i'm sure a great coach but the coach feels like a secondary thing here absolutely but I mean, okay, the coach can bring some, you know, spirit to the team. I think and... that's what he brings. I think it's 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 that gelling of the team, right? The spirit, you know, the the pep talks before uh, the matches. You need somebody with with an aura next to you that kind of pushes you and gives you that that edge, right? Or you don't yeah, feel that. Yeah, for me, it wouldn't be. I mean, as a player, I wouldn't care who my captain is very much. Yeah. Uh, again, no disrespect meant to any captains. I mean, especially like Ivan, I'm, you know, he he spearheaded the team to an Olympic victory. So there's definitely a lot of credit there. But personally, like once I'm playing a game, I don't think about who my captain is, you know? Right. 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 Uh, but okay, we'll see. It's it's gonna it's it's not gonna be an easy match for either team. It just feels like India is more established, right? These these guys are more established as potentially top tier players. Sure. You take India. I'll take Uzbekistan. I'll go with uh, youth. And uh, fair enough. And, wait, wait, wait. India's young. What do you mean youth? Nihal is like uh, seventeen. <laughs> Fitted is like. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this, That's this true. This team is like average age. Okay, v I mean, Vidit is already uh, an old guy by 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 Uzbekistan standards. Wait. Vidit is an old guy. Was Vidit born in '96 or or what? Yeah, of course. I mean, he's like twenty something. He's like twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. He's he, obviously he's not, extremely he's not, young. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm joking here. But Uzbekistan yeah, yeah, has yeah. Uh, has the super young guys, right? I think they're true, around like twenty. True. They have some really. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Vahidov probably is like the oldest one, and he's um 25 26 cool um the other team is china spain 
That's, That's interesting. an interesting one. Who do you take in that one? Ooh, I feel like Spain. I, I might be making a mistake here, thinking that like I know the Spanish guys better, so they're they're more familiar to me. So I like rank them higher. I've never played these Chinese guys. Really? Um, Lu Shang Lei. Yeah, like I, I've never played any any of them in a classical game. Bai Junsu? Bai Junsu. I've really never good. played any of them. I played them online, but never in a classical game. Mm. I I know Lu Shang Lei is uh is very dangerous. Uh I don't know the other guys. Like I haven't even seen many of their games, so it's hard for me to comment. Bai Junsu is 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 very 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 good. Uh Xiu Xiang Yu, I don't think is playing as much, but overall a very solid player. And Li Di, Li Di is a very uh enigmatic player um i don't see him play very often but obviously you know you have these guys like Li d you have uh, guys like machun um who are just like established 2600s that don't play or at least i don't yeah. see them in in a lot of tournaments so i have no idea how to assess their their, their play i know they're extremely powerful and they're extremely um cultured very very cultured players and and they train a lot with uh, all the other Chinese um, and I think that gives them a lot of strength everybody knows that whenever you go either to China or India um, as uh, as as a Westerner you you're uh, probably going to lose some rating <laughs> so because these players just don't simply don't play that much but they're extremely extremely strong yeah that's that's the thing about Chinese players is they their ratings stay a bit lower yeah because they don't play outside of China and very often they don't even play FIDE rated games, but they're definitely working and playing chess. And we just don't see it because it's more behind the scenes. So they are it's hard to judge. While Spain, we know these guys very well. Like, I mean, Shirov is on the team, right? He was a top player for decades. So um, it's Santos Latasa Jamie, who I think is doing quite well. Uh, Anton? He's um, very good. Anton, Anton's very yeah. good. Anton obviously is extremely good, quite established. Obviously, Shirov, we know, very good player. Shirov, extremely, extremely good. Yufa, not playing that much. I think Santos Ruiz is uh, the more established, let's say, fourth board. And I think he's been uh, scoring some very important victories as well. In fact, I think the one that gave yeah. them uh, the first group stage win against, uh, who did they win in... Uh, in the first uh, mm -hmm. group stage match in the quarterfinals. Ah, they beat uh, Azerbaijan. So I th Anton and um, Miguel Santos won the two important victories in the second match to give them the overall match victory against Azerbaijan. I would expect yeah. probably them to once again play and UFA stay on the sidelines, at least for the first, for the first ma match. You'll, yeah, you'll get would, Spain, yeah? Say, yeah, let's take Spain. Because they beat Azerbaijan. I mean, Azerbaijan is so strong, right? We thought that they were going to That's, win. Oh, by rating, Azerbaijan were the favorites. I mean, uh, huge favorites. look at their team. Huge favorites, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Taymor, Shakriar, Mamedov, uh, the younger guy, Suleimanli, also very good. Asadli, also younger guy. Gadir Gusein, I mean... Very good team. So Spain beat them. China beat Poland, also very good. But to beat Azerbaijan is quite, quite special. Yep. Look, I'll go with the Latinos. I'll go with España. Also, they just destroyed Costa Rica, uh, 7-0 in the World Cup. I feel there's, uh, you know, um, there's some spirit there uh, around the Spanish team. It's so. in the area. I, I, it's in the air. I'm gonna take Spain as well. Um, I say Spain, I Uzbekistan. Spain. You say Spain, India, in the grand finals, and then who do you think is going to be the grand victor of um, of the tournament? India or Spain? India. I'm taking India. I'll this team is very tough. Vidit, Nihal, Nari, SL Narinan, Sashi, uh, Saturman. I mean. Such a tough team. It's it feels like they are the favorites. If if you had to pick one team out of the remaining four, to me it feels like they're the favorites. I'm taking Uzbekistan all the way. Wow. 
all the way, young baby. Guys. Wait, so you think Uzbekistan are, are going to be the world team champions, the Olympic champions? Uh, I mean, they have to share a little bit, no? No, 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 no. I think they're going to win. Every I mean, look, the U.S. is out, so I don't, you know, I cannot be accused of uh, being a traitor. I'm going to take Uzbekistan all the way through. Romania didn't even make it to the group stage, so... <laughs> No, no, no. It's no, it's fine. Was... <laughs> what tough. else is uh is 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 new in the chess world? Do we have anything? So I'm I'm I know that we already talked so much about the chess boxing, but I'm watching. There's like training videos from the chess pro channel of Aman training with uh someone. Was there? I, I I did not I did not check the new the new stuff. Yeah, there's there's a train video, and also like Andrea Botez has. A lot of uh, kind of boxing content, kind of. Uh huh. Out. Uh huh. Uh. So she's training a lot. Okay, so know, this is Dino what I'm up. hearing. I don't know if this is true, but this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that Andrea is going to do the boxing, and Alexandra is going to do the chess playing. Yeah, that's what I heard too. So that kind of changes everything. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, fair. What? <laughs> I mean, you know, once once you're winded and you've been running around and you know trying to dodge punches, that like that kind of affects your chest a little bit. Absolutely, hundred like, you percent. Know, just sitting down, fresh, and not having to do any physical exercise beforehand or during. Hundred percent. That's a that's a bit of a plus, no? No, I I mean this is like all close to borderline cheating, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I would be having Alexandra do push-ups on the side for the duration of the round and then have to play chess. I mean, the, she has to do something while they fight. Yeah, I, so when we did this push-up chess stuff, right, in Toronto, which we uploaded the video on our channel, I realized that you do a little bit of exercise and it's difficult to concentrate on chess so much. It's like, yeah, okay, push-ups are not very strenuous exercise. You're not getting winded, and you don't have another person coming at you. So it's it's very different from boxing. But even that, it, I realize that I sit down at the board, I'm like, I don't feel like playing chess. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it must be very difficult, especially when you're doing something very, very demanding and challenging like boxing. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, so I think more or less, have we decided, are we going, I think we're going, right? Yes. We're, we're, we're making the trip to, to LA. Yes, we will. Are you trying to get well, tickets? I'm, I'm really enjoying these videos of Andrea boxing. I mean, and there's also one where like they're, they're doing other workouts. They have a lot of workout stuff on their channel and they're also like have one where they're boxing and playing chess so we we have some insight into if she would be a good chess boxer yeah i would actually like to i think we're actually going to connect with the both sisters while in la um shoot some some content with their them uh maybe get them on the podcast should be a good time in la yeah yeah it should be fun have you ever been to la uh yeah of course many times Oh. I, I lived in Santa Barbara for a few months and since the airport in Santa Barbara is rather small and doesn't really have many good connections except to LA <laughs> I would I would usually fly to LA and then take a bus which is about a two hour uh, trip to Santa Barbara uh, so I spent some time in LA as well yeah 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 we'll have to figure out the tickets we'll have to figure out where we're staying um who's traveling with us, things of that nature. But what are we going to do about the tickets? Are we are we buying tickets or are we trying to like get in? Is 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 anybody? I mean, I feel... <laughs> I mean, you're such a... Listen, you, I mean... You're, you're you, a you superstar. You, like... you're, you're, not, you're not supposed to buy your own tickets. I don't know. I, I, I feel you shouldn't be... We can like have a chess boxing match with Lawrence to determine... Who buys the tickets? <laughs> wait, wait. 
in preparation. Wait, 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 wait. So how would this work? In preparation, so, let's say so we you land have on to, Thursday, right? You have to fight Lawrence because I I, I can't, obviously. Uh, so you fight Lawrence and whoever wins gets the tickets. I mean, Lawrence whoever wins, has tickets. Uh, doesn't Lord, get Lord. It. Whoever wins gets their tickets paid for. No, but Lawrence doesn't need his tickets paid for. That's true. <laughs> so, it so doesn't seem do... like a good proposition for him. Does it? How, how do we do this? <laughs> how do we do this? Um, I think we might have to take one for the team here. Just get our own tickets. Okay, in that case, what type of tickets do we get? Do we get uh, ringside? Do we get uh, the uh, nosebleeds? What, what, what do we do? What's the budget, Fabi? Oh, I, I misunderstood you. I thought you meant the plane tickets. No, no, not, not the, the plane tickets. tickets the, the, the actual no, we're, we're flight good. tickets. We're good. We're good. Christian, we got the tickets. You got the tickets. We got the tickets. That's what I'm asking, Fabi. Yes. So you got the yes. connection. All right, yes. you got the connection. Don't worry about that. Okay, 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 okay. In that case, I'm not worried about it. Excellent. I thought you meant the plane tickets. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. I was going to say, let's take the Greyhound if, if we're really slumming it, you know? <laughs> no, we're not taking the Greyhound. We're definitely not taking the Greyhound. All right, we're getting... Uh, yeah, we should definitely get the tickets soon. That should be a good trip. We're going to stay there for like four days, shoot some content with pretty much everybody that's around. Um, we'll connect with the chess bras. We'll connect with the Bota sisters. So that should be fine. Cool. What else is uh, what else is new? I think we're pretty much covered a lot of things. Ah, yeah. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody that's celebrating. Um, are you going anywhere for Thanksgiving? What's your plan? Yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'm traveling for Thanksgiving. See family. Yeah. Uh, you you are already seeing uh, seeing relatives. Yes. For, in Massachusetts. For uh, yeah. yeah, visiting with the parents of uh, of my fiance. Yes. So um, yeah, it's it's a good time. It's a very nice time here. I, I, I really like this place. It's uh, in the mountains, very quiet, um, very relaxing, a bit chilly and breezy, which is always something that I enjoy during the winter months. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a good time. You're not going to watch my cats. That's, that's a bit disappointing. Your cats are taken care of. They're fine. That's what I've heard. Yes, yeah. yes. But people were asking for... Uh, videos of you cat sitting yeah i'm afraid those will have to wait <laughs> yeah all right cool fabi i think we're uh more or less good to go episode 12 we've made it episode 13 are we going to do anything special for episode 13 so why it's why spooky, would episode 13 be special it's a spooky oh, number. Like a, yeah we can do it on friday friday the 13th yeah yeah we've been pretty consistent with the uh, scheduling okay we'll figure it out fabi always a pleasure congrats on the win thank you and uh happy thanksgiving and happy thanksgiving yeah. to everybody watching happy thank thanksgiving. you once again for uh for watching for tuning in thanks for all the support and we'll see you uh in the next video cheers guys cheers.